I want to thank you all for being here today. I, I, I'm told by ACR we have 140 members of the press, so I, we truly appreciate you all being here and covering the meeting. This is really exciting abstracts, posters that are, that are going to be presented, and four of the ones we have here today. Uh, so without further ado, I wanted to uh, introduce Dr. Uh, Andrea Decenzi. He's Director of Medical Oncology Unit at the National Hospital in Ospendali, Galliera, in Genoa, Italy. And he's going to be talking about a randomized placebo-controlled phase three trial of low-dose tamoxifen for the prevention of recurrence in women with operated hormone-sensitive breast, ductal, or lobular carcinoma in situ. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to present our results at this uh, press conference. Um, so I have no direct financial relationships to disclose. My hospital receives institutional funding, both for nonprofit and profit clinical trials. <clears throat> so with the introduction of mam mammographic screening, uh, intraepithelial neoplasia represents at least 20% of all breast neoplasms. This entity includes atypical ductal hyperplasia, ductal and lobular carcinoma in situ. These disorders have a slight different heterogeneous behavior. While ADH and LCAS may be offered tamoxifen based on the results of the NACBP prevention trial with a low uptake, however, um, there is a tendency in the last few years to de-escalate the treatment of DCIS, which includes radiotherapy plus five years of tamoxifen because of the lack of evidence on overall mortality. <clears throat> we know very well that tamoxifen is very effective in prevention but its toxicity, namely uh, rare cases of endometrial cancer, deep vein thrombosis, and menopausal symptoms represent an important barrier for its broad use in the population at increased risk for breast cancer. This drug is quite old. It was developed in the 60s. And at that time, the minimal effective dose was not assessed. Uh, this drug binds to the estrogen receptor with a saturation kinetics, but it's not clear what is the minimal active dose to elicit its biological and clinical effects. So our hypothesis was that the lower dose, namely five milligram per day, and a shorter duration of treatment, namely three years, was as effective and less toxic than 20 milligram a day. So some tw 15 years ago, we conducted a randomized window opportunity pre-surgical trial in women waiting for, for surgery, where we randomized women to 20 or five or one milligram per day. And you can see here very clearly that the lower doses, even one milligram per day, was not inferior to 20 milligram in decreasing breast cancer proliferation as measured by ki 67 whereas in the control arms there was an increase of four weeks apart. So the study design of this trial is the following. Women aged 75 years or younger with either ADH or LCIS or ER positive or unknown DCIS were randomized to five milligram of tamoxifen per day or placebo for three years plus at least two years of follow-up. The primary endpoint of the trial is the incidence of invasive breast cancer or DCIS. 500 participants were enrolled from 14 centers in Italy. Um, the women were assessed every six months with clinical visit and quality of life questionnaires and mammography was repeated every 12 months. The median follow-up of the current analysis is 5.1 years and is based on a total of 42 primary breast cancer events. Uh, these are the main subject and tumor characteristic at the baseline. You see there is no imbalance between the two arms. Mean age was 54. 45% were premenopausal. As you see, the Mediterranean diet, diet works because the mean BMI was 25. 20% had ADH, 10% had LCIS, and 70% had DCIS. Two-thirds were ER positive, one-third was unknown. There was less than 10% of R2 neo 
over espressors, quadrantectomy was performed in more than 80% of the women, and radiotherapy was delivered to the women with high-risk DCIS, namely G3, comedo, positive margins, or younger age. These are the main findings of the trial. There was a 52% reduction in the cumulative risk of developing a recurrence in the low-dose tamoxifen arms, 28 versus 14 events compared with placebo. This difference is statistically significant. The, the annual risk of events declines from 24 per thousand per year to 12 per thousand per year. Likewise, uh, perhaps more <laughs> impressively, there was a 75% reduction in the risk of contralateral breast cancer with low-dose tamoxifen, but of course, this analysis is based only on 15 events, so we have to be cautious. Serious adverse events, of course, in this de-escalation trial, toxicity is as important as efficacy. We saw one case of stage one endometrial cancer on tamoxifen, one case each of deep vein thrombosis, and one case of deep uh, pulmonary emboli in the placebo arm, no difference on other neoplasms, coronary heart disease, one death on tamoxifen, two deaths on placebo. If we compare these findings with the NACBP P1 prevention trial with the dose of 20 milligram per day, we would expect 2.7 endometrial cancers on tamoxifen and 2.4 DVT or pulmonary emboli. So patient reported outcomes as are as important efficacy here. We carefully assessed the frequency and intensity of hot flashes, which is the most frequent side effect of tamoxifen, using a semi-annual questionnaire self-reported by the women using the method developed by Loprinzi and co-workers. There is a slight borderline significant increase in the number of hot flashes per day, less than one hot flash extra on tamoxifen. Uh, whereas if we multiply the frequency by the intensity, there was no significant uh, difference between the two arms. Perhaps more importantly, vaginal dryness or pain during intercourse was not affected by the use of tamoxifen and likewise, musculoskeletal pain or arthralgia, which are the most important side effect of our aromatase inhibitors, were not uh, increased by the tamoxifen. <clears throat> so I want to conclude by saying that we have shown that five milligram per day for three years can have the recurrence of breast intraepithelial neoplasia in line with the effect noted with 20 milligram per day or even slightly better uh, in the NSABP B24 trial. Low dose tamoxifen decreased contralateral breast cancer by 75%, suggesting a strong preventive potential. The rate of endometrial cancer and DVT on five milligram was not different from placebo and two times lower than 20 milligram. Um, the menopausal symptoms were not worsened except for a borderline effect on hot flashes. We think our results have external validity given the pragmatic nature of the trial and the easy accessibility of the drug and are therefore generalizable. Because the five milligram tablets are not available in the market, you can either cut the 10 milligram tablet or use the 10 milligram every other day, which I think is applicable in clinical practice from tomorrow. The study was supported by the government, the Italian Ministry of Health, and two charities, the, it, the Italian Association for Cancer Research and the Italian League Against Cancer. We are indebted to these supporters for the continuous uh, support to nonprofit trials for fair equitable and affordable medicine. Thank you for your attention. So we'll take some questions now. Um, I'll start with uh, one. So the standard of care, besides the dose being 20 milligrams, is also five years. So do you think with this trial we're justified to just give three years of, of tamoxifen instead of five? Or in your practice, would you go to five years? 
in my practice, I, I've been using lower dose for 15 years now, and, uh, and the duration would be shorter, yes, absolutely. I, I think the five, the five uh, years uh, intervention is based on adjuvant trials, but this is a different cohort, uh, non-invasive disease, and so, I mean, I would say that, uh, yeah, our data support the use of three years. Go ahead. <clears throat> Caroline Helwick, ASCO Post. So if your population was about 60% with DCIS, how can your endpoint be DCIS, one of your endpoints? Well, uh, DCIS is uh, a recognized endpoint in DCIS population because the majority of the recurrences are DCIS as well. Okay, so it would be more DCIS in a patient who has DCIS, like more lesions? More, uh, more recurrences, both in the same breast or the contralateral breast. Okay. Remember, with DCIS, we excise it, and so um, it would be in the same breast. You could get Who, it back. Okay, and these patients had surgery then to have yes. the DCIS removed, Correct. and then they got they got it again. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. no, no, that's okay. And then um, your on your outcomes, your all breast events. What does that include? Invasive breast cancer or DCIS. Okay, thank you. Has anyone else studied this? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Nick Mulcahy from Medscape. Um, has anyone else studied this? Low dose to Except for, uh, you know, our group, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are some groups which uh, are doing trials with low dose tamoxifen. For instance, there is one trial in this country in the women who had Hodgkin lymphoma and were irradiated, this, uh, this is a very high risk cohort for developing breast cancer. They are doing a trial of five milligram. Oh, okay. Um, and, and again, what, what, what's, the, what's, the, uh, what, what's the trial group or the organizers of that? Can, can ah, mm, I, I don't remember now. I mean, the. Okay. But it's, it, it's, this isn't a completely novel concept. It is. It is quite inco incomplete, but you know, the drug is generic. The problem of tamoxifen is that it's too cheap, I think. So there is no commercial interest in, in yeah. de developing it both from the industries and the doctors. It seems like such a great idea. I mean, it's amazing that it hasn't been Thank tried you. before. You know, Thank you. When, when, when you look at uh, drug development, in many cases we rush these drugs out and we don't pay attention to the dose that's needed. We pay attention to the do dose that's not very toxic. And so many of the drugs that we use, we actually end up using them at higher doses than we need to use them. And this is an example of a drug that's been out for you know, 50 years. And, and we've had the, you know, we, we've, we've thought before that we don't need that full dose. And, and you know, the benefit of these sort of trials is a drug doesn't work if you don't take it. And so if you can find ways to take the drug, like in giving it at lower doses, then these women are gonna benefit. You know, when, when you look at data on aromatase inhibitors, there's 60% compliance. That means 40% of the women don't take those drugs. One last question. In the, in the press materials, you said this is practice changing. Um, does anyone on the panel wanna, wanna comment on that? Do you agree with that? Uh, looking at this data, I would certainly give, especially in the ADH and, uh, and the LCIS patients, I will definitely give lower doses of tamoxifen. The DCIS patients, I mean, you know, th this study is based on few events and obviously there's gonna be more follow-up. Um, and, and once you have more than 42 events, I think in the DCIS patients, you can apply it. But if I have a DCIS patient who's not tolerating tamoxifen at the 20 milligram dose, I'd be extremely happy to lower it to five milligrams based on this data. Thank you. Uh, Charles Bank, head MedPage today. Um, a couple of questions related to dosing. Uh, the, the data on KI-67, it appeared that one, one milligram might have been even more effective than five. Why did you go with five instead of one? And secondly, why, why did you choose placebo as opposed to what's considered the standard dose, 20 milligrams? So the first question, <clears throat> five, one milligram was as active or not inferior to the other doses, but in other surrogate biomarker trials that we have done, it was 
less active in modulating circulating biomarkers such as insulin like factor 1 or uh, lipids. So we chose 5 milligram because it appears to be the compromise between activity and, uh, uh, and safety. Um, second question, we could have done a non-inferiority trial compared with 20 milligram, but there are a couple of constraints. The first is a larger trial. We didn't have the resources to do that. And secondly, the women don't want to take 20 milligram. Um, and Dr. Kaklamani, um, how, how do these fit with the current practice standards in, in North America? Is, is uh, tamoxifen the standard? Do they use uh, AIs for, the, for this indication? What, how, what are the possible implications? So um, AIs in the in the past few years became one of the one of the treatments for for DCIS and, and high risk lesions. The problem is you can only give it to postmenopausal women, and when you look at the data, uh, it, it was superior in the women up until the age of 60. And if you think about the fact that they go into menopause probably at 52 or 53, we're really talking about eight years, right? Where AIs are superior to tamoxifen, and again you're having an issue with compliance as well there. Um, so for the rest of the patient population, tamoxifen is an excellent drug. One of the reasons we try not to use it in older patients is the, the, the risks, the risk of DVTs and the risks of, of endometrial cancer. If you don't have that, um, I would think that would be a, a wonderful idea for our older patient population too. <clears throat> On your baseline characteristics, <clears throat> excuse me, it said ER positive DCIS, but it didn't specify for the LCIS. Were they, they had to be ER positive, right? LCIS is virtually ER positive in over 90% of the cases. Okay. So we didn't mandate to measure it to measure. in LCIS, but those who, some cases were measured, but okay. the problem is with the DCIS. Okay, and also, are, are these patients continuing on tamoxifen now that the study's over? Because if you stop it, wouldn't their risk recur? Well, no, the study uh, has finished in, t in terms of intervention. We are following up the women, but one question is whether there is a rebound effect, which uh, up absolutely requires that you don't treat uh, any longer. Okay, thank you. And this will be the last question. Yeah. Marisa Weiss, breastcancer.org. You know, remember, it originally started when tamoxifen was introduced at 40 milligrams a day. So it went from 40 to 20, and now, you know, down to five, et cetera. So this, we know this medicine so well over so many years. Uh, the problem is when you're, you know, talking to patients about it, They've heard too many of the bad stories and none of the good stories. And it, it, for people to be receptive to this, we almost need to reintroduce it as a new medicine with a new name or not to be anything but fully transparent, but to sort of make a, um, may have to distinguish the, the experience of being on the five milligrams a day from the 20 um, in, any, in, a, in a thoughtful, um, accurate way. Otherwise, it's re really going to be hard to, to compel people or intrigue them by the therapeutic benefit. And I would just say it, it's also, as you were saying, just the, there's so many women stop an aromatase inhibitor, don't capture its value because of real or perceived side effects, and we need to, you know, re think about tamoxifen again and not, it, it's the, it's the um, unpopular younger sister kind of thing in the, in the, hmm. in the, in the series of choices, so. Well, um, that's why we rely on you. Yes. When, when you all are, are, are you know, uh, covering this to, to, to spin it in a way, obviously a true way, but so that we don't frighten our patients. Right. Because these are drugs that they won't work if we don't take them. And if they get too frightened and they don't take them, they won't get the benefit from them. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you so much.